Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Today we've got topics to go through just like usual and we're going to get straight into it. Starting off with a report from Simon Phillips that says been told by two strong sources now that the deal is all agreed for Raheem Sterling. A hold up may or may not be whether we are trying to do Ake as well as a double deal. But deal and terms are agreed for Sterling. So Sterling is wrapped. We've agreed on terms with him and terms with the club. That's where it says, you know, deal being the deal with Manchester City in terms for Sterling. So that is wrapped. Chelsea have locked Sterling in and the only thing that's apparently maybe slowing it down is that we're going to try and do Aki in a bit of a double deal, you know, maybe a little bit of a discount if we get two done in one. I don't really know. It's very possible that it's going to cost the same either way really. It's just about saving time and getting both done at the same time. But on the on the vein of this Raheem Sterling thing, which by the way I'm very happy with Chelsea signing Sterling I know a lot of people are saying Man City reject all this, that, the other. Um, for me, not the case. This guy is a talented winger that is capable of scoring in the Premier League and playing at the top level. You know, buying Premier League proven players is something I very much agree with. We've seen Timo Werner, Ziyech, you know, these kinds of players, they've come from abroad where they're hitting really good numbers. Ziyech for assists and, and creating some really good goals as well. Timo Werner putting up great goal scoring numbers, but when you get to the Premier League, it's different. And Sterling has proven time and time again that he can hit double digits fairly comfortably in goals. So this one for me is absolutely brilliant. On the next week then, we have another report coming from Simon Phillips via Court Offside, one of his colleagues. He says, Raheem Sterling deal is all agreed. We know that Todd Bowley concluded the deal after weeks of negotiations by Marina. Hearing from other sources, the final fee is said to be 55 million. Now, I think a lot of people, when they heard Sterling go for 60 million, when there's a year left on his contract, I can understand how you think, why not just wait a year, he'll go for free. Obviously, the problem being, if Sterling's going for free, we won't be the only club that's looking to get him. There'll be plenty of other clubs looking for his signature, and potentially clubs, you know, Barcelona currently can't afford to pay uh, transfer fees, you know, obviously in a huge amount. They're struggling with wages, of course, as well, but... It's easier for clubs, even though they're struggling with money, to say, well, we don't have to pay anything up front. We can put money towards these wages and it makes it a lot easier for them. And maybe even start off, they have incremental wages where you start off at a very low wage. And then after two years, it goes massively high. And that's how they can get around their financial problems that they're having now and pay it later. So it does make sense for Chelsea. I I'm happy to see this ruthless approach because the money, as much as we talk about the figures, you know, 55 million is a lot of money. It doesn't really come, it doesn't come out of our pockets. You know, it's Todd Bowley and his team's money now, given that they, um, they run the club <clears throat> and 55 million out of rather it be lower. If it was somewhere around 40 to 50, I think I'd have been happy with that. It's, it's a few million extra, you know, 50 million I, I think I would have been comfortable with if it was 45, 40, I'd have said very good business. So a little higher than we would have liked, but to get Raheem Sterling over the line as a Chelsea player for me, that's absolutely huge. So hopefully some sort of announcement, an official, you know, for Bitsu Romano, here we go. He's also said himself that it's basically done um, in a few tweets and on podcasts and such. So very very big news here then this article has given us a bit or shone a bit of light on the situation for Rafinha so Chelsea now in direct talks over sending 120k a week star at Stamford Bridge and this is apparently for Rafinha apparently that is what we're offering 120k a week the next 48 hours will be key obviously we reported that it's a done deal and it essentially was you know we agreed everything with the club we agreed everything with the player it was ready to be signed and his agent I'm sure you guys have been aware seeing all this going around on social media his agent has at the final seconds just gone pause for a second and he's gone over to Barcelona and is trying to get them to be able to figure out if they can get him apparently that's what the talks are saying whether that's accurate or not I don't know but that's what we're hearing so are Barcelona going to be able to offer 120k a week maybe I'd be surprised if they can cough up that kind of wage at the moment given their current you know problems there has been some levers pulled like they've been going on about for ages and they have got some money from selling their tv rights or something like that um so i'm hoping this one is sealed and chelsea will get rafinha and it's just a case of agent drumming up some business trying to get better wage if 
Rafinha has no interest, re well, not no interest, if he's not really going to be happy at Chelsea, I would rather him not sign at all, because I want players that want to be at the club. But I don't think that's the case. I think he'd be very happy with Chelsea, but it's his dream to play for Barcelona. So I think he's, what, like 25? So in four or five years, maybe he ends up going to Barcelona. Who knows? But if he's happy to play for Chelsea and he'll give his all and he's not going to be crying for a move like a certain striker that we've just offloaded on a loan, then I'll take him. And to follow on with that, maybe to put your um, your minds at rest, it says Barcelona contacted Leeds yesterday night to submit a new bid following talks with Deco. The verbal proposal does not fulfil Leeds' request yet. Leeds insist on respecting the agreement with Chelsea at £60 million. So if... Uh, it makes them sound like the good guys there, you know, they insist on respecting Chelsea. Realistically, they just want their 60 million either way, you know, they don't care if it's to Chelsea or whether it's to Barcelona. So, 60 million is still what they're going to have to cough up. There's reports that they've gone in and it's just been far too low. So, we'll see. It says it's still open on the player side, so he's agreed to go to Chelsea, but if Barcelona can nip in there and find the money, then they will, but... I think I'm going to be very surprised if they do. That's my take. I think a lot of people are worrying about it. I personally, not too worried. And then here we have another report on the Barcelona situation from Shea Lugasi, who is a chief editor of the Barca Times. And he says, um, sources at Chelsea say that despite Deco's being with Barcelona, they believe Rafinha will play at Stamford Bridge next season. They don't see much chance with Barca to equal the offer with Leeds. The player wants uh, by, uh, Barcelona, sorry. But the difference is a big, you know, they're really not going to be able to fund this money. So a bit more to put your minds at rest there. Now some news here from Simon Bajkowski, I think is how you pronounce that. And he says Man City do not want to sell Nathan Ake this summer and would only consider it if they get a big offer and have a replacement lined up to buy. And the big offer is going to be around 50 million. So we know that Thomas Tuchel is a big fan of him. Again, I, I've said it before, he would not be my preference at all, but if Tuchel wants him, I'm willing to back him, you know, he gets he gets time with this project to see what he can do. Maybe he turns Nathan Ake into what Man City maybe hoped he would be, um, but for 50 million that seems crazy when there's better options out there and younger options out there as well. So for me, I'd be staying away, but if Chelsea offer up 50 million and City can find a replacement in time, it it will happen. And then we had from Fabrizio Romano giving an update on the delayed situation. He said he's the priority for Chelsea. He wants to leave Juventus and is keen on Premier League football with Chelsea, but Chelsea have to improve their proposal. And there's a little bit of more news that came out from, I think it's um, the sporting director at Juventus, something along those lines. And he basically said, it's tough to keep a player that wants to leave, you know, we're going to see what happens, blah, blah, blah. So it's very clear, it's coming from Juventus themselves, that he wants to leave Juventus. And that makes it a little bit easier for Chelsea, hopefully, to get it over the line. But that's going to be the end of the video, guys. If you did enjoy, please leave a like on it. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss out on a future video. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.